to you this morning to this ninth international conference for the applications of stable isotope techniques in ecological studies, or as you call it, ISO-ECOL, which to me sounded like a terrible virus, but I'm sure it's not. <laughs> So um, welcome to our campus on a beautiful winter's day and I do hope that you enjoy the next few days while you're here with um, all your talks. I had a quick look at your program, it looks very, very interesting and uh, I'm very pleased to have people from many countries and different organisations here to discuss uh, applications of techniques and development of techniques because I'm a very strong believer in uh, new methods and techniques for driving scientific advances. with uh, this slide here, which for this audience really needs no explanation. This is uh, an approach that we've used for decades. Uh, we analyze the isotopic composition of an organism to establish some, I get some idea of its trophic position. We can, we can write a, a simple equation that the isotopic composition of the predator is equal to isotopic composition of the prey plus some trophic discrimination factor. <laughs> Dr. Carolyn Curley and I'm a professor at the University of California in San Diego and in my lab we study um, foraging ecology of vertebrates and that just means we want to find out what animals eat and why that matters for their environment and for the ecology in which they live. And so we have many projects in my lab, including looking at aspects of sea turtle foraging ecology. We look at sea turtles in um, the Pacific Ocean, and we use um, our main tool is to use stable isotope analysis of animal tissues to try and figure out where they go to reconstruct their migration patterns and reconstruct what they've been eating. It's a great honor for me to uh, give a talk here. And uh, first, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Science and <coughs> Organizing Committee. I was founded for about 10 years long for uh, the project on is analysis of isotopomers. I concentrated on two uh, analytical technologies. One is isotope ratio mass spectrometer and well, the other is tunable dial laser system. At that moment, just uh, near infrared uh, spectroscopy. We can uh, dis uh, distinguish between carbon-13 and uh, deuterium, both uh, mi just mini-mass difference. So high resolution is necessary. about whale shark and manta ray in the Mexican Caribbean and I came to Perth to present my research to the ISOCOL conference which is a very important stable isotope conference globally. Uh, basically what I've been doing is that I sample whale shark and manta ray in three different aggregation sites and what I have seen so far is that during the whole period of the study, the stable isotope hasn't changed, which is good. We also haven't seen any sexual segregation on the stable isotope data. And basically, whale sharks and manta rays are feeding the same. They are sharing resources in the area.
Um, thank you for coming after the field trip. And I'm really delighted to be here to talk about my favourite topic in the world. And I thank the organisers very much for allowing me to do that. Um, hopefully by the end of the talk you'll see that there's been a little bit of a revolution going in plant, on in plant physiology. I, um, I learned from all your trophic level talks that there's been a lovely revolution going on with using compound specific measurements to look at trophic levels and I was really excited to see that and I hope I can get you guys as excited about what's happening in plant physiology with um, lasers. My name's Trent Marwick. I come from Albany, down on the south coast. I began my PhD at uh, KU Leuven in Belgium in 2010, and that took me to Africa, where we study the riverine cycling of subtropical and tropical river basins. A lot of these river basins, there's very little data that's come out of these basins previously, and so we're trying to fill this gap. Rivers play a key role in linking the terrestrial and the oceanic carbon cycles. And so it's important to understand the processes and the mineralization and the transport of carbon from terrestrial to oceanic and how this links in to global carbon budgets. I'm Kat, I'm doing a PhD um, based at the British Antarctic Survey in the UK. Um, I'm really grateful to the organising committee of ISOACOL for giving me the opportunity to present these findings. Um, the conference has been wonderful, I've learned a lot, um, so thanks. Uh, my name is Alex Wyatt, I'm a research fellow from the University of Tokyo. Um, uh, this is my fourth ISOACOL and it's a really great opportunity to see uh, research from uh, different fields and different perspectives. Um, we're hoping to welcome everyone to Tokyo in 2016 for ISA Eco, uh, the 10th ISA Eco, and I hope we can do as good a job as the organisers have done here in Perth. It was my great pleasure and honour to organise this ISA Eco conference here in Perth at the University of Western Australia. We had more than 120 oral and poster presentations covering each single aspect of ecology, from deep oceans to city centres. I trust that all participants enjoyed the conference and returned home refreshed and full of research ideas. Please join us for the next ISO ECHO conference, this time in Japan in 2016.